Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Hopefully uh, you're having a good day, whatever time of the day it is that you're doing your video. Today we're going to be talking about something totally new to you. You probably haven't seen this before. It's called scientific notation. Uh, we're going to get to the notes in a minute, but just wanted to talk about why we use scientific notation first. Uh, as you see, that word has science, sort of says science, not quite, but you can probably guess that that means science. Uh, and we use this uh, way to write numbers when we're talking about really, really big numbers or really, really small numbers. So first we're going to talk about some really big numbers, uh, which are sometimes called astronomical because they are like all about the uh, this planets or how far away things are from Earth and things like that. And they're just very, very large numbers. So first we're going to talk about uh, how far some basic things are from Earth. So the moon from Earth, you know, you see it in the sky at night, is 240,000 miles away. Now, that's about, uh, it's about 10 times around the Earth is about how far away the moon is. And if you could take the space shuttle there, uh, the space shuttle goes 17,000 miles an hour at its highest speed, it would take you about eight hours to get there. Now, that may not seem like that long, but 17,000 miles an hour is 243 times going 70 miles an hour. So you can imagine that's really fast, okay? Uh, the next one is how far the sun is from Earth. I mean, the sun's up in the sky. It looks like it's real close. We feel the heat from it. Well, the sun is 93 million miles away. And on the space shuttle, if the space shuttle could go to the sun, which we know it can't, but if it could, it would take us 228 days. And that's going 17,000 miles an hour every minute every hour of every day for well over half a year. 228 days is like seven and a half months. So just think about that for a second, how big that is. Now we're going to talk about the closest star from Earth. And again, this is the closest one. It's four, a little over four light years away. That is 24 with 12 zeros after it. So we've got hundred thousands, millions, billions and trillions. So it's 24 trillion miles away. So if you were to take the space shuttle going 17,000 miles an hour, it would take you 59 million days to get there. It's 258,000 times as far away as the sun is. And 59 million days, well, that's only 161,000 years. That's pretty crazy. Okay, those numbers are called astronomical. Now, if you could, for some reason, if it was possible to go the speed of light, well, the speed of light is 671 million miles an hour, which is 40,000 times faster than the space shuttle goes at top speed. It would still take you 1,475 years to get there. So if they could have built the space shuttle back in the year 539, and the space shuttle had gone, I'm sorry, if you could go the speed of light, if the sp space shuttle could go the speed of light, 671 million miles per hour, and on the year 539, which is 1,500 years ago, it had taken off to get there, it would just be getting there, just now. So that's how ridiculously far away that is. So we're going to talk about how to write these numbers in different ways, these big, huge numbers. And we're also going to learn how to write small numbers, like right now, floating around wherever you are, there are bacteria, there are organisms, all kinds of things like that. Things you cannot see, you need a microscope to see. The diameter of a bacteria, 0. 0.00008 inches. Okay, that's why you can't see it. It's so tiny. Microscopic is the word. And the smallest organisms are about 0. 0.00008 inches. Okay, so extremely small numbers and extremely big numbers. So now we'll get to your notes. Uh, hopefully... Those numbers, the way I showed those to you, show you how big and small numbers can be. And we're going to read through these notes. Again, I kind of said this at the beginning, but just read through it. What is scientific notation? Well, it's a way to write numbers that are very large or very small so that they are easier to understand. Technically, all numbers can be written in scientific notation. Every number can be written that way. But most of the time, we're, we use them, we see extremely large or extremely small numbers. Okay? So here's what they look like when we write them. So if we wrote... Uh, a number in scientific notation, it would look something like this. A very large number would be 5.834 times 10 to the 10th power. 
That means 5.834 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times. Okay, a very, very large number. If it's a very small number, it has a negative exponent in front of it. And what this means is you would be doing 4.9 times 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1. So basically cutting this number in tenths over and over and over and over again. So it would be really small. So on your notes, here's what you need to fill out. We're going to start with the very big numbers. The first one is 10 to the 10th power. Okay? And as you see, that number ends up being 10 billion. 10 to the 9th, 1 billion. 10 to the 8th, 100 million. 10 to the 7th, 10 million, and so on and so forth. And as you see, the numbers are continue, continuing to get smaller. So we went all the way 10 down to 1, and now we get to 0. And you probably want to ask uh, your teacher in class how this works. 10 to the 0th power is 1, which is kind of weird to think. But really, all we're doing is following this pattern. So then we get 10 to the negative first power is 0.1. The negative second power, 0 0.01. Negative third power, 0 0.001. And just keep filling these in. Negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, and negative 10 which is point zero 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 to that. 10 to the negative 10th power is a tiny number. It has nine zeros in it, okay? So what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to take these numbers written in scientific notation and write them in standard form or normal form. And we're also going to learn how to take normal-looking numbers and write them in scientific notation. So let's turn to the next page. That's what we're going to be doing, okay? So the first step, I've got two numbers here. I want you to write them down. Take a second there. Okay, and here's how you do this. First, you see this large number here? What you do, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing a large or a small number, the rule's the same. You move the decimal to the right of the first non-zero number. Now, that doesn't always mean you're moving it right. It means you're moving it to the right of the first zero number, non-zero. So if I look this way, okay, I want to move it, in this case, to the left, because I'm trying to put it to the right of the first non-zero number. So all I do is I say I'm going to move my decimal to right here, and then I just count one, two, three, four, five. So I move that decimal five times to the left, okay? We'll get to that in a second, what we do with, with it after that. With the small number, I still want to follow the same rule about moving the decimal to the right of the first non-zero number. Again, it's on the right. That's what that means. So this time, this small number, I want to put it to the right of the first non-zero. So I'm still counting. One, two, three. This time I moved it four times. Okay, and it's important that you realize that this is a big number and this is a small number, how many times we moved it. Okay, let's go to the next section here. And it says... Blank the number of places. Well, you just count them. All you can do is count the number of places you move the decimal. Move the decimal, which I wrote down right here. Moved this one five times to the left. Moved the smaller one four times to the right. Okay. This number is your exponent. Remember those first two I had written down on the other page that had the look like this? Okay, that's where those exponents are going to go. They're all going to look the same when they're written in scientific notation. It's just the exponent's going to tell us how much bigger some are than others. Okay, so the next step, you're going to write down the new number, and I'm just going to shorten this because there's not a whole lot of room, so I'm going to write new number until the end of the non-zero. So anything that's included in, this, in the numbers, okay? I'm going to write numbers here. So when I move the decimal in between the 7 and the 8, I wrote that down right here. Now it's 7.8640362. Okay, that's my new number for the big one. For the small one, it's now 3.84. Notice I didn't include those zeros. Okay, I didn't write anything after that. I just wrote that down. Okay, the next step is you're going to multiply, and this just means basically that you're going to write down the way it looks. Multiply the number by 10 raised to the correct exponent. Okay, 
So again, we wrote down the new number, then we multiplied it times 10, and then we wrote down how many times we moved it. This one we moved five times, this one we moved four times, but since it's such a small number, and since the way I moved it, it's a negative exponent. Okay, so there's that page. All right, next page. Now we're going to take how to write a normal number. I'm sorry, which one is this? How to write, uh, we're going to take a number written in scientific notation, and we're going to write it like a normal number. And this is really simple. All it really is is moving the decimal, however many times it is. Okay, so you're going to look at the exponent. and move the decimal right for, I'm going to write plus exponents, which means positive. Okay. And then I'm going to add to the left if it's a negative exponent. Okay. Now, there are times where we'll add zeros and commas where needed. We'll write that down. I could like, use a lot of words here. Okay, so here's me doing this one just so you see it. This is a positive. Positive exponent is 5. So I move the decimal 5 times to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Puts it in between the 3 and the 6. I just write that number down again the way I see it. I include the decimal between the 3 and the 6, and that's it. I want to add some commas here, too, so I do count 3. So now that's 786,403.62. Now with this one, again, this is a small number, okay? And the rule when it has a negative exponent is you go the other way. You want to make this number smaller. Remember, 10 to the negative fourth power, right in here somewhere, is 0 .0001. So if I multiply this number times 0 .0001, it's got to get smaller. We don't have to actually do that math. We just have to move the decimal. So one decimal place puts me there, and then one, two, three more puts it right there. Now I can't just leave those blanks, so that's where I'm going to put my zero. So I got one, two, three spots for zero, and then three, eight, four. Okay? And that's all it really is. It's pretty simple. It's not too tough. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to do one big, one big number, one small number, and then I'm going to change one from scientific notation that's big into normal or standard, and a negative one that's uh, the negative number from a scientific notation into normal, okay? Standard. So let's do this first one. Again, the rule is find the decimal, move it to the right of the last non-zero. So if I move it, one, two, three four, five, six times, and I write it again, 3.725. I don't need all these other zeros, okay? Not necessary. And as you see, I moved it how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 10 to the sixth power. So that's what the, the way they look in scientific notation. Now, if it was a small number like this one, I'm still going to move it, and I want to put it right here this time, because that's the first place, the first number that's not a zero. So one, two, three, four times, and then I write that down. 3.16 times 10. The important thing here is remembering that this is a tiny number and the exponent has to be negative. If you don't put the negative there, you'd be saying you'd multiply this times 10 four times, which would make it a lot bigger. It's negative four because we're multiplying it times 0.1 four times. Okay? One more example for a positive. This one, these, these are usually the easiest. If this is a 4 here, it's positive, this number's getting bigger, I just move the decimal 4 times to make this number bigger. Well, the only way to move that is to the right. So when I do that, 1, 2, 3, 4 times, I'm going to have 8, 7, 2, 5, but I have that one extra space, i got to put a 0 there, and I can put the decimal there if I want to. That might help me figure out that this is 87,250. And again, this last one, if it's a negative exponent, it's a tiny number, I still am going to move the decimal four times, but since this is such a small number, I'm going to move it the other way. So one puts me here, and then three more creates one, two, three blank spaces that I have to fill with zeros, five, one, four.
And there we go. So you need to have this video ready when you come to class, and uh, we will do some more of these. Hopefully you saw this is going to be a pretty easy thing to do, and you will be good at it, no doubt about that. All right, we'll see you later. Have a good day.